Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> Good evening, gamers. Yo, is that, is that a wild coddle in my chat, dude? Or is that, is that yeah, a wild lock. Lock. Divinity gang? Divinity gang, now also Dungeon Discourse gang this week. Hey, gamers, it's Thursday. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse, where we right. take, well some time about, to take some time out of our day to talk about our show and the behind the scenes and all that. Uh, Belle was supposed to be here, but she had to uh, do some other stuff uh, last minute. So we got Ethan instead, which is, you know... Okay, I guess. Go I on. mean, <laughs> we from Divinity Mondays to Drama Thursdays. The Drama so. Thursday, dude. <laughs> Divinity. <laughs> Last Monday was a mess, dude. Oh, o fuck. Honestly, do you know what? It was one of, like, <laughs> with the boys, one of the most fun sessions. Pure gameplay, I it fucking was ass. Did it that. was fucking ass. But it was, like, it was one of the most fun I've had in a while. The game got so hard all of a sudden. <laughs> what the Not fuck? just that, but, like, it screwed us on the most, like, mundane shit. Yeah, I my favorite part was that time where you drank a potion and killed me with it. That was fun. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I interpreted healing to heal you. Oh, it's not drama Thursday. It's it's trauma Thursday. That's a good shout. So trauma Thursday. Actually, that's actually true. Holy fuck. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the to, to discourse. We're gonna be talking about the show, uh, about the last episode in particular, but also maybe some episodes before then. Uh, go in deep. I know with Duke we can have a little interesting chat about a subclass because there's some. It's not entirely. Uh, it's. I I joke that it's busted. I don't think it's that busted. No, I'll be honest. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm, it's more of like um, because we've we've talked about the whole like warlock subclass a lot, and, yeah. and to make it customize it a bit more to or flavor it a bit more to fit your particular patron uh, and and stuff like that. So we can uh, we can we can definitely uh, dive deep into that. Kind of like a. a, a uh... A recap of like the class mm -hmm. so far however many sessions i've had yeah. it now like what, and, you know what's the deal it's gonna be something kind of similar to what i did with ethan last campaign but just on a way lower scale of like we're gonna have to go go in talks every once in a while and tweak some things and see how things fit and all that sort of stuff uh but yeah first things first uh announcements wise uh we announced it last uh, sunday but again there's a there's a charity month coming up at some point soon uh fall or autumn depending on what neck of the woods you live in. Um, Charity Select, uh, we're in talks for either doing October, November, or like a mix of both. So like start halfway through October and then end halfway through November. It's still a bit up in the air, but once uh, the final, the, the, the you know dates have been finalized, we'll obviously let you know. Uh, I'm planning on doing two one shots for certain for Charity. One being an idea that Bopo gave me which I fucking love. It's like a Hunger Games style one shot where people can donate to charity to drop like care packages for certain player characters on like the on the map, I guess. A very very much like like in the vein of Hunger Games, and I think that's a fucking sick idea. So definitely gonna gonna be doing that. And the second one is I, I I I reached out to the gang that I did the Witcher one shot with last charity campaign. Like, hey, would you guys be down to do another one? You know, like another Witcher adventure with the same characters you played last time and. Everybody was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty enthusiastic about it. So that's probably something that we're going to be doing as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be fun. Other than that, um, this Sunday we'll have a normal Dungeon Select campaign 2. But then the Sunday after that, we're going to be bringing the um, campaign 1 characters back for another bout uh, to celebrate our anniversary. Our 40th anniversary of, of doing the show. Uh, we're gonna be bringing. There's a, there's a couple of storylines that we haven't properly. You know, there's some 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 loose ends regarding uh, the Heroes of Exile or certain characters within that party that we uh, have not yet solved or tied up, I guess. And uh, we're gonna be doing one of those um, that week, specifically one surrounding uh, Aberan, because there's some shit there that we have yet to uh, yet to solve. That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time. Other than that, uh, any, do you guys want to announce anything? Anything you guys have to say? Oh, man, remember when I said I was gonna stream Monkey Island when it came out? Well, I'll probably be out of commission. So yeah, because of your fucking fucking surgery. rain check on that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hey man, I mean that game's not gonna that game's not going anywhere, right? No, it'll, right. it'll be there when you're ready. Um. Yes, yeah, so that's tomorrow, dude. That, I mean, thanks for being here anyway, knowing that tomorrow is like a uh, surgery day. I, I would have totally understood if you were like, ah, you know, rather not. 
just kind of want to chill or something. I mean, it's not today, so I don't, I don't give a hoot. Out with the homies. Fair enough. Just Fair in case enough. something goes wrong. But I mean, I already said I probably I might not be around for DS, so that's that's the one thing. Like, yeah. I, I probably won't be here on Sunday. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Totally fair. Keep us in the loop on that. Um, do you know what? Hmm? At some point, someone somewhere is gonna end up playing. Like with our group and with how much everyone's falling apart, we're gonna have a session where someone's just there in a hospital bed on like the paid Wi-Fi. <laughs> I mean, I'll be out. I'll be out of hospital the same day. I'm just gonna be out of my fucking brain on codeine. I haven't got any yeah. dice, but I've written one, two, three, four on each side of this little pot of jello. I'll be out, I'll be like more out of my dome than Bell usually is. So. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And maybe you could hit her up some advice, dude. You no, know, she's 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 more well versed than any of us when it comes to. Yeah. Being... Well, how do I how do I deal with D and D on opiates? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you just don't do any math. You ask someone else to do all the math for you. Alrighty. Uh, so let's start with a little recap. Uh, last we left off, the party is still aboard the Porcupine uh, on their journey to find some uncharted islands to find where Umberlee's trident is hidden slash guarded by some of her champions. Uh, but the way there proves to be pretty perilous. Uh, we, we, we've, we've had a storm. We've had sirens attacking. And then last week or at last sunday i guess uh we the party ran into two out of the three omens uh that basically mark a a, a cursed voyage kind of kind of thing very very like pirate superstition uh the first omen being the white phantom the uh ghost ship you encountered um second being <clears throat> a ship ascending from the depths of the ocean to try and sink you and the third one you know is going to be some kind of bird that grows in size and grows and grows until it's big enough to pick up your ship and take you fuck knows where um <clears throat> first omen you dealt with pretty pretty cleverly i guess in a way uh, instead of having to actually board the ship you just blasted a hole in the side took out of the ship any loot that was valuable and went on your way the second omen uh the ship uh, combat is something that I definitely want to talk about a bit more because I bent and 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 bent a lot of rules to make that f whole encounter seem more seem more fun, more engaging, I guess. And I'm just very curious as, uh, as to see like your takes on on some of the decisions and some of that stuff uh, a little bit later on. But uh, yeah, you're you're getting close to where you need to be when it comes to uh, finding the actual islands that you have to be at. So making progress towards your uh, your next like proper 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 story arc i suppose making you know trudging your way through uh but first things first you know a, a segment that i added to the show not too uh, not too long ago uh, where we look at some uh, like look at a DD tweet that caught my eye um so i'm gonna just reveal it on stream real quick uh, it is tweeted by Fae Forge Academy. I remember like being like being like rating them once, like way yeah, back we rated them on, at one and, point, yeah. And, and they uh, they've been doing their thing. And I saw this uh, this tweet, and I was like, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So I'm curious to see what your what your takes on this would be. Uh, your player character is hit by a fatal blow. Their friends continuing to fight around them. What are your character's final thoughts? Oh. So whichever one of you wants to go first, I guess. Okay, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Wait, that's Brooks's last thoughts. Is fuck it, I'll be fine. Yeah, I, I think if it really was a fatal blow, and obviously with shock setting in and everything like, I don't think Brooks would realize. I think he would believe that he's gonna be okay, that he's gonna survive it. You know, he's not really had stubborn till the end i guess yeah i mean you know he's only gone unconscious once i think twice not maybe many, not many yeah. um i think he would maybe not realize the gravity of the situation fair enough 
I think the kind of the kind of guy Davian is, it would probably be something like, like like his last thoughts would be of home, or <sighs> yeah, because that's tough. Like, I don't think usually he has, uh, you know, he's pretty pragmatic and he has good presence of mind. But like, it, it, when you when you're dying, when you're like, okay, this is it. Like, what else are you gonna think of other than? Probably should have written home in the last six months that I've been gone or some <laughs> shit. Like, it yeah, should have called him. Yeah, pretty much okay. because because as as much as it's you you know oh we're all ah uh, the party we're all buddy buddy and we we all like each other. It's like yeah, but my parents are still like, well, Daddy's parents are still out there like wondering what the fuck he's doing. Like he just kind of dipped to be a mercenary they probably already assume he's dead but <laughs> you know i probably won't assume he's dead right because like davin davin was trained by uh his mother right like so like she at least she knows like how capable he is so, like i feel like you know i i feel, I feel like you give yourself a little more credit right sure yeah but when they haven't heard from him in that long and he was basically like setting out on on a a life of combat to some degree or at least danger it's like yeah they 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 might they might think he's dead i guess he's not been gone that long for them to assume he's dead but yeah i last last thoughts are of, are of home for sure of the the busy little frontier town that is Briar's town and the the decades that he spent growing up there and fucking finding his feet and the people who raised him and the friends that he made. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. <clears throat> so, sounds yeah, I mean I, shit like this whenever I see like I scroll a scroll over like my in my timeline and I see sometimes I see tweets and I'm like, oh and that always makes me kind of like think like, oh, it's a shame I'm a DM. You know, I don't really have characters that have that much depth to them. Because even in, like, except for, I guess, even the campaign that I currently play in with Laura, it's like, because I know it's like a pre-written thing, there's not a whole lot of room to really play with backstory anyway. So I tend to just kind of, something basic. Like, there's a little bit of depth, like enough... To, to understand the motivations, but no, no, like, real in-depth thing. So I'm always like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't have that that luxury, I guess, of, of, of playing in a campaign where everything is homebrewed and, and you know, you know your character backstory is going to come up at some point and, and shit like that. So you really put a lot more, more thoughts, thought into that. Whereas you're playing in a campaign where you're like, ah, just get, get the depth I need to, uh... Yeah, I know Laura, but like, in gen I feel like in general, maybe that's just me, but I feel like in general that's that's that's, that's typically how it goes in, in 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 campaigns like that. You tend to have a lot more depth and a lot more backstory in a campaign like this compared to something that is already pre-written. And I don't know, it might just be me though. But I mean, yeah. you know, it's like D and D as a game is way less linear than like a, a story game, for example. Yeah. But even within that, there's, you know, there's varying degrees and... Yeah, exactly. There, yeah, like, DMs can work ways in to explore stuff within modules, but it's different to, like... Like, we can turn around at a homebrew set and be like, right, okay, well, fuck everything that we were doing, we want to go do this. Which, yeah. at that point, you're going so far... I, I guess it's the freedom in a homebrew campaign to know that you're not really ruining anything, whereas... If you're playing a module with friends and your group just decides, fuck it, we're not going to do this entire quest line that is the core and heart of the module because we want to go see if so-and-so's uncle is still weighed out of fucking gold. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, like, <clears throat> and I understand the sentiment, Laura, but it's, it's not that I'm saying that I'm not invested because I have a limited backstory. It's just saying that... Uh... Knowing that, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I, I know what I'm trying to say, but I, I find it hard to put the words. 
the fact that my character in that campaign has doesn't have as deep as a backstory as I as it would have had in a campaign that is homebrew doesn't mean I'm less invested. You know what I mean? Like it's just I know that <clears throat> at the end of the day there is a beaten path that we're following along with some room for, you know, breaking off the path a little bit and then going back to it. But for me, that just makes me I don't know, I just feel like I can't I, I don't want to go as deep as I would in a campaign that I'm like, oh, dude, I have the I have the entire world. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm any less invested. It doesn't mean I I'm, I, I enjoy it any less. I'm just, just that's just the way my my brain works when it comes to thinking of character. Like I I think of character backstory with like the setting and 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 the the module and and what the world in mind. Yeah, I guess that's the whole part of character building in homebrew worlds as well is that someone can be like hey so i had this idea for a town or a city or a guild or a group and i want to make my backstory around that which homebrew dm you know there might be the odd dm but most homebrew dms will be like fuck yeah we'll yeah we'll that's, pr that's pretty much we'll how Genwin. Into the world. and and well i guess davian but yeah Davian's uh, well. Gen whereas yeah if you're playing published worlds there are you know every group deviates a little but there are set organizations already the the places have maps you know yeah you exactly know what exists like for You're instance not... my character uh <clears throat> fury in 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 laura's campaign in the in the netherdeep campaign that it's it's a campaign written in the critical role world so like he is from vasselheim he he worships a god established by matt mercer and gang in that world you know what i mean like i've just picked like oh yeah no he's from that city uh he left that city because of xyz uh, but like my backstory is really crafted with with like the world in mind, and and I didn't really go deeper than that because I was like, oh, this, you know, this will do. This is enough to 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 establish who who he is and and what his goals are. You know what I mean? Whereas if if that world would have been fucking a blank slate, I would have gone a lot harder on the character creation probably, or like on the backstory side of things. Excuse me. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I uh, think the best way to put it is like. When you're playing a module, as much as you're like playing D and D, you're there to play the module, right? Like, yeah. If you weren't yeah. interested in that sort of D and D, you wouldn't have. I've got yeah, involved. Exactly. Like, I'm also there as... because I'm like, this Nether Deep shit sounds sounds dope. I want to I want to play what the writers of this campaign have written, and I, I feel like if I then go throw a bunch of like backstory shit and characters and story in there, that could deviate us from a path that would also like not piss me off, but I'd be like, oh. But I really want to get back to, you know, what we decided, you know, the, the module we're doing. Because it's fucking sick. It's fucking cool. And that's what I want to play. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, speaking of speaking of which, tomorrow, y'all, tomorrow evening, a late one, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern on Laura's channel. We're going to play the next episode of that campaign. So tune in. Um, we have some questions. Uh Quite a few questions got submitted in the Discord, and I also have a question for you too. Um, so I'm gonna ask my question first. How are you guys enjoying uh, the the whole pirate ship stuff so far? And what did you think of the the, the specifically the, the ship versus ship battle? As it was a first time for me, and I really wanted it to feel epic, and I bent a lot of fucking rules to make it, for, in my opinion, make it feel a little more engaging and and fun. Like, how did you experience that in particular? And how did you? How are you experiencing the whole pirate ship stuff as a whole so far? No group, fast. no group will ever not like a pirate ship. Yeah, true. right. <laughs> pirate ship arc fun. I think this was the better campaign to do it because I think we as a group are a lot more neutral in terms of the law. Yeah. Um. I think it's really fun. I think it's the first, like, heavy illegal shit we've started doing. And yeah. that's pulled out. Eh, okay. We're not, we're, we're, the first sort of it, stuff yeah. that we our, couldn't our get company, away with. Our company is um, questionable, but <laughs> our actual mission, our actual quest, doesn't feel illegal on a, like, 
<laughs> like no, like from no, from a litigation like, perspective, like we're out getting some random druids and stealing some I mean, shit from them. Chris like that's not a big deal, murder. right? It might be for a very good reason, but it's still theft and then murder. Well, mm, it depends if the druids are they outlaws, because then you're confusing things. The druids have nothing to do with the whole Umbrelli uh, fetching the trident from Umbrelli. Wasn't druids... it the druids that took the fucking thing that had the thing in no, the first so place? No, so we're going no. to get the trident from a champion of Under of Umbrelli. Yeah. Okay. And then well, Umbrelli the trident kind of will then bitch, be used so to I'm kill sure the, the champion. Druids. But yeah, but also, not a great after person. this is done, Captain Vera does want to yeah, try. Yeah. Then we want to go after the druids. Right. At the very we're least, using... like we are like accessories to murder. I. I... <sighs> Plus, you know damn well on the way back, if we see a merchant ship, like, half the group's gonna be like, yeah, let's go pirate shit. I don't think they would. We'll see, but I don't think they would. I don't even think Davian would. Davian's not necessarily... I mean, he's not a criminal. You know? I think the group would be down to pirate shit. If Kosuth was like, yo, there's a... I don't think so. One of my artifacts on that merchant ship, I would burn it. If I don't think down, the, the but... majority of the party would be down to, to just to just rob. like Daigon is scared of death Daigon, of for any not, form no. of law enforcement. I don't see Davian like Duke. I don't see Davian being like, "Oh, those innocent traders, yeah, let's fucking rob them." I don't see Davian doing that. Jax back in the Jax, day, absolutely. back in the day, would, I think Jax but would. now with the influence of the group, he also might be a little tentative. I, I think Jax is a Kess yes. could be persuaded. Brooks doesn't give a fuck. Kai. There's no way Lazarus would be Kai's a pirate. Kai's part of the crew. Also definitely wouldn't. Kai's part of the, ship, part of the crew, crew or whatever. Or a pirate ship. Like, Kai's yeah. a yes. Yeah, so it would be like Kai is a yes. Brooks Jax, is a yes. I think a yes. Jax, Jax is a 50 50. Say... Kess can be persuaded. Yeah. Like, the other three, absolutely not. There's no Elijah, fucking way. There's no fucking way. But like I said, like if it, if, you know. If it was like, oh, there's a Tyrannical Truth on the motion vessel or whatever, like, oof. It, up in smoke, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if not, there's no there's no reason. It'll like, the... what what we're doing doesn't feel... Like, maybe maybe it's illegal, but, like, we're, we've been fucking with the, the, the plans of greater beings for the most part of this campaign at this point. Like... Uh, taking a trident from Umberly or or whatever, it doesn't feel illegal in the realm of man. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are all on a ship. I don't know if it, I don't know if I feel like it's, it's beyond. I don't yeah, know if I feel like only, it's beyond. That's the only or... illegal thing that has happened on the ship so far is sh showing forged documents and hiding your and faking your identity during yeah. that like. That check. Oh, they didn't actually used the forged documents, did they? No, but they hid their identity for sure. They they hid their identity yeah. absolutely. So that's yeah. like that's like that's like the only real like law that has been broken. We're, uh, and we, so you know we're accomplices to yeah, and Captain that, Vera. Yeah. yeah, but like if God forbid, uh, somehow something goes tits up and high sea protectors find you, the entire ship is under arrest because you're all accomplices to. And then we Captain. start murdering, and then we're well, really so the fine. very exactly. act of saying. <laughs> The shit with her at this point onwards is a crime. It is yeah, a crime. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Is. Yeah. She's, well, a want, she's a wanted fugitive, and so is Jax. You guys have been accomplices since day one because Jax is a wanted fugitive on the scene. But it's a vic right. I guess it's a I guess victimless when we crime. On the right? land, yeah, it is, yeah. argue, like, it's a victimless crime. Like yeah. no, no one. It's very, like that. I think that's part of where like the neutrality really rings true because it's like you know if we were if we were good characters then we probably object to, to even setting foot on the ship in the first place or cooperating or helping someone like Captain Vera in the first place. Mm -hmm. But because we're all so neutral, it's like there's a reward in it and it's in one of our friends' interests and and we're not killing innocent people and yeah, yeah exactly yeah, right. like yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's it's worth it's worth the reward to just help someone yeah, out. Yeah, like, no one in the group's group. evil. No one's and gonna be like, that, like, let's torch down the ship for fun. Is for the greater good, or so you've been told. Or so we make, believe. You know, or so you believe. It makes it a little easier to be like, yeah, fuck it, you know? Yeah. Because you're all very, like, indifferent on right or wrong, as long as, you know, as as ends justify the the, 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 the means kind of yeah. thing. I think, I think it's... Uh, being stuck on a ship together is great for character 
interactions because there's nowhere to go. Like there's this okay, there was this amazing social experiment. Um and I can't remember the name of the this the researcher that conducted it, but basically a bunch of people got on a raft in um I think Spain or Portugal and went all the way across the Atlantic the on this raft in a group. Um and the guy who was conducting the research basically was like by the time this raft gets to the other side, they'll all be killing each other. They'll all be at each other's throats. Uh, but they all just became really good friends. And so, <laughs> like, hopefully, you know, and he hated it, by the way. Dude was sat at the back of the fucking raft, like, writing notes, like, oh, any minute now, they'll turn on each other. And, and like, trying to basically make shit up that wasn't happening at all. It just didn't happen. Um, it just didn't happen. He was really <laughs> mad that they all just became friends and the, like they were lifelong friends, like still friends to this day. Uh, so you know, you put a bunch of people on a boat with with a a common goal, like it's going to be a great bonding experience. They, uh, I feel like they were more, like, they, were, they were they were more than friends. I think we should clarify. There were a couple there was a occasions. Lot of boning. There wasn't a lot of boning. It, it was it was. Um, sensationalized to be a sex raft which really upset the guy <laughs> carrying out the research but really? it wasn't that prolific i think there were maybe a couple instances where a couple of the members slept with one another or one woman slept with two two of the guys on different occasions or something but like I mean, hey, that man. was pretty much it listen dude that was pretty yeah, much I mean, it. you're on that fucking raft for a long time you know fuck yeah. it you know it's anything to kill time he, at that point at some point at some point like uh, i think it's Genovez. The, the guy who ran the study, at one point, is like, fuck it, I'm gonna cause some some shit. Yeah, yeah, he, he really did, which is like, poor, poor research uh, yeah, etiquette that, in that general. He's fucking... really, he was really trying to yeah. engineer the results of his own experiment. Like, at one point they caught a shark, and they butchered it to eat it, and he was like, <laughs> he wrote in his notes something along the lines of, I hid the axe just in case things get out of hand tomorrow. Like, because he thought someone was going to get killed in the axe, but like, no one was even angry. They just, he was writing about how they butchered the shark and they were showing all their like barbaric I instincts and how they were, their, their bloodlust. And it's like, man, Fuck they just off. caught and ate a fish, bro. Like, yeah, what the just, hell? Just relax, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The whole, th the whole thing was very interesting <laughs> and pretty telling because he he got people who are all from very different cultures and yeah, i like think they were, his they intent they hadn't met beforehand or anything they were yeah. all strangers to each no. other no so and Absolutely. they were they were all like they were all from different countries different religions like very deliberately okay because he wanted Absolutely. that to create friction he wanted there to and be clashes yeah then it did the opposite like they all just um, like, apparently they like he... one played guitar and they all like sang together Dude, faith stuff. in humanity bro look, look he caused so yeah. much shit that they removed him from activity on the raft and he wrote in his in his observational diary the only one who has shown any kind of aggression and that is me a man trying to control everyone else including himself and then <laughs> cried <laughs> the hell how long did this so last there you go. this trip how long did it last you know Ooh. Oh, it was like a couple months, I think, because it was it was like by wind, like they sailed on a fucking raft from. Hundred and one days. Yeah, Jesus. there you go. I went from from Las Palmas. The thing to... is, I have mad thalassophobia, so like I no, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. One, one of rats, them was a captain. Though? Like one of them was a uh, there was a Swedish woman who was like a legit, like ship captain, and then mm -hmm. another girl who was a who was a like diving. Like, some kind of diving, like, her profession was to do with diving. And, like, at one point, they had a they had a leak or something. Like, the, the, the thing got damaged. And the guy, the guy in charge, like, wouldn't let her fix it. Even though that's literally her job. <laughs> and then later, at night, when he was asleep, she just crept out and jumped off and fixed it herself. And then continued as normal. And he was really upset about it. Anyway, we need to talk about D&D. &D. Yeah, what a fucking... Right. We are. We um, yeah, so we're on, we're on the love raft right specifically now. Specifically, okay. the, 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 the ship to ship combat. The, the, the ship combat was... was I will I will say... Have, considering all I did was sit in the crow's nest and just fucking pelt that ship with shit and set it on fire and whatever the fuck else. It was a great time. I, I'm like, shit like that is, is going to be... Because as like... Um, as in depth as the rules for like naval combat can be, mm -hmm. just with the nature of the whole thing, when you've got a whole turn order of of people who all have different abilities and means to do different things, like there's going to be a lot of improvisation, like pretty much no matter how comprehensive like the the rules on it are. So 
there was just it was just a lot of fun on both sides just be like yeah i'll fucking i'll shoot fire arrows at the sail and hope that does something or like at one point i wanted to try and entangle the crew members but then i was like what's the fuck point i'll just shoot i'll just blow them up with this thunderclap arrow that i've had sitting in my bag for like a week like <laughs> fuck it it was fun i mean just got using different parts of the, my kit that i haven't even really fucked around with in a while or used at all yeah you were the first um, person in this campaign or like maybe like even ever have i given out dm's inspiration last campaign i don't think not so. this campaign i think you did last campaign but it was like scripted like it, everyone had that little moment right before sort of the the last right chapter. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. gen sat down with Mil Milil and like he well, got I did inspiration that, i didn't give that. you dm inspiration but I, I gave everyone like a, a boon from their like right now yeah patrons no, that's right, that's or right. anyone important to them yeah yeah true yeah but like i don't know man like you did the whole like you had this plan of like blowing up the fucking gunpowder barrels and just the way you wanted to kind of do it i don't know i just it, I, I liked it and i was like ah oh, fuck it Holy fuck shit up bro yeah, yeah let's go but um yeah like the, the whole reason because i i read through the like ship to ship like there is a rule set for it right uh, yeah. it's not very in depth but i was like i read through the like through the most and i was like it's kind of kind of kind of kind of lame <laughs> you know what i mean like a duty like oh ship and ship have a turn in the turn order but when on the ship player characters can only do like there's only three actions like, that actions. can happen in a ship turn so that would mean that half the party just wouldn't do anything in a whole yeah. turn and i'm like that's lame you know what i mean that's move boring. ship fire cannon yeah so i was like Reload I'm, I'm gonna do it i was yeah. like okay i'm gonna give everyone a, a turn based on purely based on the fact that we have a big group and that would mean that half the group would just not be doing anything uh a, a turn at a time which sucks and I was like, they all have their separate roles, so I know that some of them are going to be, you know, Kai is going to be the man behind the wheel. He's going to be doing that during the fucking ship fight as well. We have people that were assigned to to be cannoneers. There's a there's a couple of ballistas. There's a mangonel. Like people are going to be wanting to do different things anyway. And then you know, Davian from the Crow's Nest just like pelting fucking fire arrows and shit at the at the at the enemy ship and all that shit. I, I wanted to have everyone just get a chance to do something in each turn because that's way more fun and then for instance when people started casting spells that were like dc saving throws i was like well i'm not gonna make a fucking ship roll a dc 13 deck save i'm yeah. sorry so i'm just gonna make it a roll to hit with your spell you know just because it, it feels better that way so like right. I, I bent a lot of rules in that sense but i i, I with the goal of the combat to feel a lot more fun than it on paper should have been according to the rules as written and i hope i succeeded in that i hope everyone like enjoyed that shit because it was i was a little scared i was nervous because like the first time we really did that and i was like oh fuck what if it, what if it sucks you know what i mean <laughs> like i wanted it to feel epic and, and rewarding and i hope it did it, it yeah, was pretty it, epic it was and fun. it was pretty rewarding i don't oh, really yeah. remember what anyone else did in that fight fire well, I, I mean this is also the first time conundrums the first time you saw Celesti kind of whip out her her kit and yeah, do some, tidal do some wave, shit, or whatever the fuck, tidal, tidal into wave, a and then turning into a literal yeah. walking constellation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Circle of stars is so fucking cool, man. Like they can wild shape, but instead of animals, they just turn into constellations yeah. of stars. That's so fucking cool. Oh my god, sick, fucking oh sick. God. And then like her being like the way I like obviously Duke. I'm gonna. I wanted to talk to you about about Celesti a little bit. Uh, yeah. And I wanted to talk to Bell about it as well because you two created her, but then Bell had to cancel, which is a shame. But you know, we have we have one of the creators because you guys gave me you, when we made it on 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 the show. You you know you you made a small backstory, you you uh, stats, uh, class, race, all that stuff. But personality wise, and the way she looks, but personality wise, I kind of had to fill in. You know, I filled in what she would be, and I feel like I kind of made her this like super curious very very passionate about her 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 um you know star chart and shit like that yeah um but also at the same time i decided to make her kind of not realize that some of the stuff she does is very extraordinary and rare so like when she climbed back on the ship as his constellation it's kind of being kind of being like what you know what i mean like very just like oh this is normal to me you know what i mean 
Uh, and I feel like I I'm hoping that that was kind of also the personality that that, that was partially maybe in mind when when making her. I wanted her. Yeah, to, the way, yeah. The way because... the 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 the, just the, the backstory. And and her her like mission, I guess her her quest, her life work. It just kind of made me think of this like, very. Just just this like this like wanderlust of like oh and this this curiosity and this oh this this almost obsession not nah, not almost obsession with the stars and her work and the charts and that moving constellation whatever the fuck that means and shit like that and I I I I, I really like. Uh, the character so far, and I'm enjoying just kind of having. She is still humanoid in that time that she's uh, yeah, in a she, starry form. She's literally just a walking consulate. It's just like just her lit limbs. Up. Her limbs yeah. are like like her. Joints. I don't even know which one you use. Uh, the archer or whatever the fuck it's, it's yeah. called. Uh, so like her joints. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's through the arrow, like stars, right? Stars, but like her limbs are like connected by like lines of like lights. Like she literally looks like a constellation. It's fucking cool. Yeah, cool as fuck. I think yeah. When we made the character, though, I I feel like there was this kind of given just the way that her her backstory is clearly she is innately curious and like. I mean, she she gave up a lot to pursue this thing she believes in. So I think that speaks a lot to just, yeah, her as a, a sort of passionate and uh, kind of driven, wanderlust ridden, like, individual. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it checks out that she would be passionate and curious, right? I mean, like, like a modern astronomer to some degree. Yeah. And obviously, but with... I like, like her a lot. She... <laughs> good she also with her brought like a, a like a story a, a, a plot hook for you guys to, to potentially yeah. uh, follow up on whenever you feel like it's time and I that's really, my goal i with, try to look um, closely at the fucking constellation got yeah, blinded yeah, by you got it. fucking you got told no yeah um what does that mean <laughs> uh you like three characters have been made uh by by three duos of the cast and this is the first one to get introduced but each of the characters will bring with them a storyline to kind of uh, you know, a, a quest, I guess, if we're talking like proper, like RPG, like a quest for the party to pursue, and 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 you know, get to know that character better, but also you know, get some get some good shit out of it. So I'm excited. I have I have a, a vague idea where I want to implement the other two characters as well, but I feel like for this particular journey, I feel like Celestia was the best pick because it makes sense why she would be on a ship and and how she got there and yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> with um shit wasn't one wasn't one of the other npcs a a parrot from like a sky giant airship yeah, or so some it's an, shit it's, a, it's an arakokra <laughs> yeah but they were part of a like a a, 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 a a fucking i forget what type of giants but like a giant uh ship crew but because the arakokra is so small to compare to the giants the arakokra would basically function as as like the captain's parrot yeah yeah, because I was kind of I was I was expecting given his history, we might see him at some point in a in a pirate arc, sat on Kai's shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I forget. Was it Koiba and Soko that made that yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Laura and you made uh, the third one, right, Beanie? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I forget. I completely, I'm completely like blanking on what you guys made. I'll be honest. We made our Warforged boy. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Who, we had ample opportunity to show up when we went to that guy's fucking tower. True, and, true, true. Yeah. Keep it, you know, keep you on your toes. You know, you never know when we they might start. We made a really knocking. sad Warforged boy. Yeah, very depressing. Yeah. And depressed. <laughs> depressed and depressing. Uh, Right, 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 yeah. Marvin the... What is it? Manically depressed robot from Hitchhiker's Guide? Maybe. It's been a while. Basically, yeah. Been Someone will know what I'm talking about. Uh, right. Questions. Laura Answers. asks for everyone uh, thoughts on, you know, hearing Daigon's voice in your head for the first time. Like, what, uh, what the fuck is up with that? I mean, I don't think it's the voice anyone expected for Daigon. Mm -hmm. But I also think, like, it just really makes sense the more you think about it. it like, it tracks. It's exciting. 
I still, to this day, I'm like, because that, that, literally that drink was just on a random list of like D100 random cocktails at a bar. And randomly somebody, you know, rolled that number and that just made, that, that just gave us a tool to allow Daigon to speak. And that is, that is mad. <laughs> Yeah, like, I that's mean, wild. <laughs> fully unintended. But yeah, it, absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess this would work that way. F yeah, fuck it, you know. <laughs> oh no, I need. Laura, Laura has told us like a couple of times the the, the voice, the, the the muse for the voice of Diagon, mm -hmm. and who is it? Oh, God. Uh, I, I, I know she's now name. also going to be playing a voice in the upcoming Assassin's Creed because I watched is that show. Is she in Um, is it sh is it sh Shorei Ag Agdashlu? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Because I didn't know who the voice. I watched I watched a couple episodes of Arcane and Gray Grayson in Arcane when Laura described Diagon's voice. I was like, oh, like Grayson from Arcane. And then yeah, it turns out it's it's the same voice actress, so that checks out. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Um, the the hearing hearing Diagon's voice for the first time, I think because we've heard Diagon attempt to speak. Um. So. Yeah, it, I don't know. Imagine. Imagine. The only time. You'd heard Koiba talk was the one episode of Dungeon Slack that his voice was absolutely fucked. <laughs> and then you meet him in real life and he talks normally and you're like, What's oh, that? That's what you sound like? <laughs> it's like that, right? It's like, I, it, yeah, it's a very, uh, I mean, I'm, do, uh, see, I'm a little like, I'm a little like, mind blown do you think that's how it would work you know what i mean like if if you could it's so it's such a strange concept to think about like what would your voice sound like in your thoughts because no would it sound like how you perceive your own voice or would it just sound like your voice sounded when you talked you know what i mean yeah because no, everyone it, hears it, their it own voice, voice. Sounds different to you it sounds, sounds like you hear your own yeah. voice yeah. everyone hears their own voice a little bit different so like so we're my not actually internal monologue voice. sounds like how i hear my voice right surely yeah but, but that's so, not how my voice actually sounds to other people yeah. so then so then are we hearing dagon's voice or are we hearing what dagon is mind when dagon used to speak yeah fuck knows uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe she's me... not attempted to speak, but I think at some point, like we coaxed, we coaxed her, and she would, she like rasped. I swear that happened. Yeah, that at was least like once. a little. I remember there being like a little rasp or yeah. something at one point or another, but like that's where kind of where it ended. Both in and out of character. Well, for me, I mean, obviously, I think that's a great, that's a great choice of voice for for Duke. That is, I think, it's a great choice of voice, and like somehow fitting, especially given like. I feel like the the Sphinx cat, like you associate it with a like a sort of Middle Eastern vibe. Is that a weird thing to say? Like no, no. being this hairless tabaxi, there's that kind of. I I would I would associate that that sort of voice and like timbre and accent that makes sense to me like aesthetically. And I um, like I, I I completely agree. And for me, what does it as well is like the fact that. It's almost like out of character. I'm like, like the fact that her voice is that like deep and 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 like unique, very unique. Like that yeah. actress has a very unique voice, and like the fact that like you know, Daigon's vocal cords are damaged or or whatever because of the like almost hanging. I'm like, yeah, it it fits. You know what I mean? Like it it yeah. makes sense that that makes a voice sound very unique and different from any other voices. Because it's a very oh oh you know so I mean? wait wait so you're making the assumption that her voice sounds yeah, like that's that because out of character when I first like got got told what it's all about I'm like I, that's the first like assumption I made I'm, I, I see I assume you know that I mean? like, that would be her unadulterated voice like if she would never had the yeah I I assume that's just Duke. what she would sound like okay yeah. fair enough fair enough but like yeah but that's that was just like my first like. That was the first thing that popped in my head. I could be wrong, but that's the first thing. Like, I was like, but maybe not necessarily. Um, she sounds like that because of that, but it does like, uh, it does like, 
kind of add to that her voice is very unique kind of kind of vibe because the her condition and the vocal cords being well fucked you know what i mean from the horse's mouth yeah uh, voice enough, like that that's just like yeah. a, 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 an assumption that popped up like the first reaction that popped in my head was like, oh that's i think i think mm -hmm. for davian it's it was a moment of uh it was kind of like a fuck finally because as just the nature of davian he's like i don't know he's been wondering i think i think at mm -hmm. some point he was probably one of the people who would try to get a word out of Daigon at some point. Uh, that makes sense. Adds up. Shame the drink's alcoholic, because I think... I think he would want <laughs> that to be the case all the time. With, with If Daigon could just communicate non-verbally, like... Verbally, non-verbally, <laughs> if that makes sense. Rather than through sign language. Because Damien doesn't know sign language. Yeah, I mean, um, I think there and are, And he's like, just that uh, kind of guy. <laughs> there are, like, plans of... I believe it's been mentioned before, that, like... It, maybe Brooks can make like a a virgin version of that alcohol or of that of a cocktail. So it, I mean, it depends. I I don't know if the ingredients are magic or if there's some magic in in making it, but it's something to investigate in character when we have time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you luckily Brooks has a friend that knows all about alcohol and drinks, so you know maybe he can be of a man like Minotaur. Maybe he can be of help. Who knows? Like All right, anyway, Ethan, I've like talked enough about Daigon's voice. <laughs> yeah, um, for Duke... No, no, fucking, we've got to get Ethan's thoughts. No, I spoke oh, about I feel, it. I feel like you guys kind of both, like... Yeah, well, okay. That's your say. Unless Ethan has anything sense. that he... Sorry. I spoke first about Daigon's voice. There you go. All right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, for Duke, did you expect Celeste to be a part of the crew since you helped create MC, or was it a complete surprise? <sighs> I think I knew Celeste was coming. I don't remember if you hinted at that. I think on our discourse, I like hint like there might be an NPC showing up. Soon yeah, that were. But I don't know. I didn't think she no it, because it was before the Triton. It was before we did the Triton colony like arc. Like I, mm -hmm. that's when I thought Celestia was gonna come in because it's fucking Triton colony. Like that would make perfect sense in a lake. Who knows? Yeah, the reason uh, I didn't, and she didn't show up. The reason I because, didn't was because in her backstory, it's very clear that she's from an ocean and not from a lake. Yeah, I, and yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you know we, I mean? we made the characters. You fucking throw them in wherever you want. Yeah. But, yeah, that, I think that's when I thought she was going to show up. So, I think after that, she kind of just wasn't on my... I hadn't been on my radar, like, on my mind at all for, for a, a hot minute. So, yeah, no, I did not expect Celestia to be on the crew at all. Um, wait, what was the rest of the question? Uh, well, did you expect to see her, or was it a complete surprise? Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, it, it, it was a complete surprise. I definitely expected to see her earlier because specifically we were going to be interacting with Triton. And we didn't. So it's cool. It's cool. Uh, it's cool she's here. And and radiant as ever. <laughs> that's going to be fun. Uh, like, it's oh, going to be a fun character. I'm, to... I'm not ready for next session, man. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to fucking be here, dude. Like, Oh, and yeah, you got fucking epic pranked dab. Yeah, oh, that's oh whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> fucking pranks. Uh, we got some questions from uh, Soko himself, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, for yeah. both of you. Uh, what do your characters now think of pirates now they've gotten to talk to a few and, and, and experience and hear more about them firsthand? Ooh, I mean, I feel like with Brooks's, like with Brooks' dad and him being a sailor, I feel like if slash when it got brought when he was a kid, you know, like, like his brothers reading fucking storybooks about pirates and shit. I feel like Brooks, like I feel like his dad would have been like pirates are a bunch of no good assholes, this that and the other. Because his dad was near dwells was a you know a, a lawful sailor and and also a ship's carpenter. Um, so I feel like he has that, and then. When he got older and realized that a lot of people do a lot of illegal things for not necessarily bad reasons and that, you know, laws are sort of arbitrary anyway. And I feel like, I feel like Brooks has always just been like, eh, pirating's just sailing, but with a more lenient interpretation of ownership, you know, like, like, I don't think he ever thought that pirates were bad people, that they were going to be like, yeah, we're going to fucking burn your ship down just because we can sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I think 
his interpretation of pirates was always, we're going to rob you, but we're not going to murder you. Okay, cool. We've taken your shit. See you later. So, I guess so Sorry. far, the pirates we've met have reinforced that. We've not, like, we've not met a pirating group that are like, we're going to kill people for the fun of it. Hashtag not all pirates. Yeah, exactly. You know. So, that's quite... I don't know if yeah. Gavi never had any preconceived notions about pirates. I think... Yeah. I think it's... Uh, I don't know. It's one of those... It, he lived in a port city, so it's like, oh, he probably should have time to figure out what he thinks about pirates. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's It's... I guess when you think about the importance of Briar's town, the the ships that would have been going, coming and going, the important ones probably would not have been fucked with at all. But there was a lot of like indie company, like indie trading companies coming through and stuff that were probably fucking beset on all sides by pirates at like every opportunity because of the 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 new world and the rich richness of these rare and never seen before like items and materials and stuff that would be, would be exported like from Briar's town but i mean davin's not a sailor his family aren't sailors he's never really like been involved he's always he's a, he's a land man he's got his Lander. sea legs because he lived in a port city but it's not like he was fucking around out in the in the open sea to get attacked by pirates you know just like yeah let's go fishing with with the homies or like some shit like that so yeah it's never really been a concern of his i guess uh it, given given the the pirates that he has now met i mean it, it doesn't seem it, he's not surprised like they have a fucking criminal fighting ring on their ship and stuff it's like yeah okay they do they do yeah, they, pirates they, they right do. but yeah it's one of those it's for the most part like ethan was saying it's like they're not really all killers it's just like they rob they they rob people without much fuss a lot of the time like yeah. and i mean the crew of the porcupine seems pretty sound Probably I feel like also the fact the that being, all the characters are neutral in like it makes it so that there's never really been any like super bad preconceived notions of pirates because like you know yeah people do shit for they're just doing what they reasons. do doing what they need to do to survive right right like, yeah it, it, that that's kind of the mood the thing yes. is when it comes to like notions of good and bad in D and D like I guess you got to that's why alignment's so whack because at yeah. what point. Like, if you're a good character, okay, like, you don't necessarily, you, you might be, like, a communist fucking, like, anarcho-communist, but you're a good alignment character, so you're in favor of pirates because they're, like, down with the establishment of imperial fucking, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, alignment's alignment is a weird subjective. thing. Exactly. Like... I think the only person in the group likely to have the only two people in the group likely to have preconceived notions are Jax, obviously, who is a pirate, but also a Lazarin, because if anyone was going to have secondhand experienced the detrimental side of pirating, it would be a Lazarin. It's Lazarine. the jeweler, yeah, yeah, the, you know. the member of a family of traders. That probably have been the, the victims of the, piracy. They probably have been victim to piracy a handful of times in their uh, in their day. <laughs> yeah, see, like Davian dealt with the land pirates. So, being a mercenary who guards merchant caravans pirates. and shit, you got a lot of fucking bandits and stuff that are trying to steal your shit. I but... feel like pirates, uh, in, in literature in general, bandits, which I assume highwaymen. translates into D and D literature. In terms of like the in-world books, pirates are romanticized far more than bandits. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for someone that's never interacted with pirates, not even and in only D &D, has like like, like books in the in the real world as well, right? Yeah. Exactly. 
Like so, they're... you'd think, yeah, you'd think it would be the same procedure, but I think I think when it comes to, um, I guess the romantic idea of pirates is a lot more of a an, a level like an even playing field. From what from how we think of it, whereas with bandits, it's usually like. You've got the merchant caravan, which has horses and stuff, and then just a bunch of dudes who jump out of the bush to stop it. And, mm. like, I think maybe that creates an an idea that there's, like, a need for violence when it comes to bandits and less so when it comes to pirates. I don't know. Because with pirates, it's like you... you Even in real life, right, it was like, if pirates try fuck with you, just give them your shit and leave. Like, that's pretty much how it is. It's like It's like... Someone robbing a convenience store today. It's like just give them. Yeah. Just don't don't like argue. Not, like, like, don't fight. Just give them the it's stuff not your and they'll money go. That you're losing. Yeah, like, the exactly. People that work on the ship. It's not their shit that they're giving away. It's boss man's, yeah. and he can deal with that. You know what I mean? Like who cares? Yeah, it, it realistically, I ain't, I ain't about to die to save like a crate of silver that boss man told me to transport from point A to point B. Fuck that. You know, like no, have, especially because it. it's, it's capitalism, it. and realistically, the people that are putting shit on the ships can afford to take the loss. Like, no yeah, no right. good businessman is in a position where they're shipping their entire value on, like, no. one ship. You, right. want anything, you want everything that's in the register? Take it, man. It's insured anyway. Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? yeah. <laughs> so it. unless someone's been and... hired specifically to stop pirates, <laughs> they're just going to be like, take the shit, pull. Nice to meet you, I guess. Have a good one. You know, they're still getting paid. Yeah. But I mean, there are definitely there are definitely some bad pi pirates out there who will fucking ruin your day. Yeah. Or your life, like just or because that, thing, I guess they, if you're not careful. Yeah, exactly. You got to build that reputation <laughs> so that when you do eventually have that reputation, when you rock up to someone, then they do just hand over the shit. But yeah, I don't know. I I yeah. From from a from a character perspective, it it, it is kind of a matter of like. They're, they're just doing their thing to get by. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Romantic seed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> For Duke, does Davian feel more confident or apprehensive about his fire abilities? Now that he's had some time. Overconfident. More overconfident. and more overconfident by the day. Yeah. Uh... He was he was apprehensive at first because it's like oh shit I accidentally shot fire and a tree fell down and now it's like oh shit I can deliberately shoot fire and a tree will fall down so <laughs> it yeah I mean Fair enough. he's he's fucking loving every second low key power tripping a little bit blowing shit up yeah I mean you know like that's the thing keep it going you're you're a you know warlock. Type beat. So if that if there ever comes a point that Davian gets too big for his boots, fucking Kasuth will come in and be like, "Hey, listen, man, pipe down, cunt." I I, I mean I don't know if you'll I I don't know <laughs> if you'll get too big for his boots, but you know he's 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 on the way up. It's on the come up, bro. Hottest yeah. warlock on the Forbes list next year. But... And like when you take into account, especially like the last couple combats where he's absolutely fucking rinsed, like. Those those sirens, dude, they did not. I mean, mm. it helps that you managed to roll like under twelve <laughs> on every deck save you made in that combat for me. Yeah, my fucking deck saves that fight sucked. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking shit up. He's fucking shit up. And he feels good about <laughs> it. Uh, for Ethan, does Brooks miss Hello. being able to hang out in taverns and wander around the city, or is he adjusting to life on a ship? I guess this is kind of more of like a question of like. Does he feel kind of enclosed and trapped, and like feels like city boy. Feel, feel feel less free city than he boy. would, you know, in the city? Um, city boy on the boat. City I mean, boy on the boat. in terms of like a social aspect, Brooks is in his element, right? Pirates are just fucking drunkards on the sea, baby. Yeah, you know, like he's having a great time socially. I think what he, I think he's settled on the ship, but I think what he misses is that ability to be like. Write them off out, see you all later. Like, there's no real... On a ship, especially not a massive ship, like, there is no sense of privacy. You know, they don't have their own quarters. They don't have their own spaces. There's always going to be someone within... It might not be a, a, a cast member, but there's always an NPC or someone within earshot. 
Yeah, they'll hear it when Brooks starts fucking jerking off under his fucking sheet, mate. You mean under? Oh. Crow's Nest has some <laughs> semblance of privacy. I think that's why yeah. Davian spent so much time up there. It's a little bit of it's a little bit isolated. He starts raising the ladder up with him so no one else can climb up. Fucking I think Elijah can, can climb up there just, just to like fall asleep thing. next to him and then jump off the fucking bro uh, the yeah, ladder to get dude. feather fall. That was great. Yeah. Oh fuck. Um a final question from Laura again for both of you. Uh <laughs> In that a character, which crew member on the boat would you be most likely to sleep with? Uh, party members do count. Party members do count. We got yeah. like Wait, out of character and in yeah. character? Mm -hmm. So, who would Brooks... Well, it, wait, is this just like a smash or pass? Or is it like... It's a smash or pass. It's like a smash or pass. Like his... Including... including uh, it's, it's PCs and NPCs, NPCs on NPCs, the ship. Yeah. Who would Davian smash and who would... We know who Davian would smash. Yeah. And who would Duke smash? I mean, Davian's pursuing Celeste. Davian doesn't strike me as the sort of man to pursue his second option. I don't know, he propositioned Cats at one point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's meant to be in character only? Well, I screenshot it uh, to put it in the documents because I can't really look at Discord and it says in another character. Oh, it, it says in another character. Okay. Yeah. I character. mean, come on, like, like, out, out, out of out of character, I'm, I would unashamedly it would be Celeste, like Celeste for sure, man. <laughs> like she's like six foot six, fucking star mommy, bro. Like, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. The, the the awkward thing is that she is a full foot taller than Davian, which I mean, I she's mean, gonna be holding him up, you know. If as long as Davian's okay with that. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> They're new. A new adventure. A new experience. Short King. <laughs> okay. I'll introduce him to, to Varia when we go back to the tavern. Oh, is it in the chat? Because we can just look it up. Yeah. Um, so Last Celeste, main question for, Celeste... Oh, oh well, no, we need to know who Brooks is going to say. Celeste for both? Duke and uh, Davian? Yeah, fuck it, man. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what Vera looks like, but I don't know, maybe she's hot. I don't know. Uh, Vera's a sea she's pretty elf. old now. Like a no, she's, she's an elf. So, uh, but she's a sea elf. So her skin is like this, like light pale blue with green hair. A lot and... of blue people in this campaign. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a theme. A lot of blue people. Um, <laughs> if the outer character is like, I know the in character line. answer. The outer character answer is the difficult one. I don't think anyone on the ship's my type. A lot of, no, there's a lot of dragonborn, and I'm not a scaly. Um, there do be a lot of Dragonborn. Yeah. I mean, have we got into why the cast is like mainly Dragonborn? Has that been tackled? No, we okay. haven't. We haven't really discussed the, the crew that. of the the crew of the porcupine. No idea. Yeah. Fair enough. It uh, might have come up, but it would have been probably when they did the Fight Club. I don't know. Out of character, like probably Wait, Vera. But, in like, it wouldn't be a long-term thing. It has to be cast, right? In character is anyone, man. That's true, actually. Like... Pick one. Like, who would Brooks ha want to ha sleep with the most? Specific okay, specifically sleep with. Yes. I think he'd sleep with Celeste just to piss Davian off. <laughs> He's... Oh, that's on brand. That is on brand. Brooks is very petty like that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> like, I don't think he would pursue, like, a romantic interest with Celeste. But I think... Which is even more fucked up, if you think yeah, about that's it. Yeah, that's messed up, bro. That's fucked up to Davian and Celestia. Yeah, the yeah no, absolutely it is. I think it's just like a... <laughs> Brooks is such a fuck. It's an ego. Brooks thing. is the fuck that Ethan could never be. Like, actually. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Brooks is the worst part of me that ever existed. God. I hate this guy. <laughs> and what about Ethan? I, I said, like... Oh, I, Vera? If it was fully just one night and done, Vera... Okay. I don't. I don't think I could deal with the the dynamics of being long term with someone like that. But Rip Celeste only had to be objected by our party, dude. I'm so excited for the whole like I don't know Astral well, sea but... shit. Laura, I mean, you don't there's understand. there's some. Uh... I don't know. Well, I have... okay, hear me out. No, no, no. When you made Celeste, mm -hmm. did you think that Davian would be into her? 
Me when I made Celesti? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean come on. So he made It himself, was me and Belle making it. Of course it's gonna be a yeah, hot woman. Like, if there was there was Duke and Belle, like her not it's being is gonna be a her hot not woman. being attractive was just out of the question, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, last minute question for both uh, coming from uh, our man Boy, with our... the biggest case of spelling errors known to man. Clay and the G. biggest dumpy though to make up for. And it. the biggest dumpy to make up for it. Uh, how concerned are your characters about the mental state of the party? You know, Elasmus breakdowns, Cass's emotional stability, etc. Ooh, it's a good one actually. Who's going first? I'll go first because um, Davian Davian is uh, like. Davian keeps track of these things. He keeps an eye on people. He doesn't really talk about things because he's usually pretty self-serving. And it's like, if this party gets to the point, if this party gets crazy enough, he might have to leave. But <laughs> it's just one of those things. that's like, I mean, if if they're gonna get to the point that like I we we can't function, like I might have to <laughs> might have to like find someone else to hang out with. Um. Yeah, because I suppose we've not been hanging out like that long. We're up to what a month and a half now, like a couple months tops. Yeah. It's it's. Davin's own mental state is pretty bad. It doesn't really show. I think he's compensating for the struggle by coping with being like blowing shit up and making the most of it is kind of copium because it <laughs> that is that is the the payoff for the trauma was yeah, we've gone Davian through all this shit i've been on the verge shit. of death a couple and I times don't think, i don't think any of the party really like knows that but davian has seen some fucking bad shit and i feel like davian is really good at just yeah he's, steely, he's that, he's he's that steely like loud and like... he's that loud funny guy that people would never guess is like probably one of the yeah like, and, Most and like out there, you know what I mean? The 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 abilities, the power that he's gained is the that that's that's been the reward for like the sacrifice of everything else so far. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm gonna make the most of this, and I guess like unconsciously be way way I like into this power. Because th it cost him a lot mentally, <laughs> so it's like this is what I got to show for it. Um, for everyone else, like I and I don't think it's one of those things. that's like he's not super aware of his own struggle, and it, it it might come through at some point. For everyone else, though, yeah, like he's worried mostly more about Elijah than anyone else, just because one, yeah, he knows Elijah the best, but also like I guess. It's been the most apparent, like, out of everyone, it's been the most apparent and the most relevant struggle that we've all seen, where he's, like, having to tell his fucking parents to, like, flee for their lives because they, their lives are in danger and, mm -hmm. like, constantly looking over his shoulder and the paranoia of this fucking cult that's after him. Having to pull one of his friends out of a like nasty ass dungeon in this fucking castle. It's all stacking up mm -hmm. on a Lazarin. And it's it's in front of everybody. Like it's all out there to see. Like we're all kind of pulling him through it as much as he might not want to even experience it. So yeah, I think I think with this this current arc. Davian is like it's kind of a vacation from from a Lazarus trauma a little bit like yeah. we kind of we left Valor back <laughs> on land and we're worrying about something else for a little while where hopefully at sea the fucking saucy spider gang will be nowhere to be seen um as for Kess I mean Davian just thinks Kess is full of shit like all the time <laughs> the because she is yeah I don't think he's too worried about Cass. Fair enough. I this? think... Brooks, I mean, Elazarin first. Elazarin's fucking holding on by a string. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Everyone sees that. Everyone has been privy to Elazarin's shit. 
You know, I think everyone in the group individually is dealing with shit, but Elazarin's the one that's had his, like, full-on, like, bed sheets pulled off, dick out, right in front of everyone. <laughs> yeah. Like, Elazarin's has really been on show, and then he's had a few character moments of, like, really just getting worked up over it, especially, like, the couple of days before we get on the ship where he finally had time for everything to catch up to him. Mm -hmm. I think Brooks is in the same sort of mentality as Davian, where, you know, we're away from everything, we're on the sea, it's time to give him a breather and maybe not talk about it yet. But there's probably some conversations to be had to make sure the home is okay. Um, Brooks and Kev... That I'm, being said, you have sabotaged his hammock numerous yeah. nights in a row or whatever, like, you're no, just so, making so, him miserable. Brooks... <laughs> He sabotaged the hammock once, and that was because it was funny. And on top of that, like, damaging the hammock, he knew a Lazarin could repair it. And plus he thinks, like, in Brooks's mind, if he babies a Lazarin and is like, everything's okay, it's all fine, we're all gonna be like, it's gonna just make it worse. He's like, ah, fuck it, like, treat him like normal, give him the same shit you give everyone else try and, like, bring back that sense of normality of, we're not doing your shit anymore, you're not the thing that everyone's focused on, work, you know, you have that time to work through some stuff. And we're just gonna treat you as normal. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, as you do in, like, a good friendship group, like, someone's got some shit going on, I had some shit going on, Duke's got some shit going on, like, you're just like, cool, we're here if yeah. you need us, otherwise we're still going to treat you like shit, because you don't want things to be different, you want that consistency. Because that gives you that place of feeling like things are back to normal. Yeah, there's always, I, I like, with that in mind, yeah, there's always a weird balance of, like, do you want, do you want to be the person that breaks the ice and is like, alright, what's going on? Or do you want to just provide that normality that you, you assume that that person is just kind of looking for in that time? So, yeah, right now it's just like, well, Lazarin, well, well, I'm sure Lazarin will bring it up when he's Lazarin ready. Lazarin will get you know? trolleyed and we'll have a chat about it and he'll puke yeah, and then we'll, he'll feel better. For now, we'll just, oh, we'll, we'll enjoy the, the, the love cruise. Yeah, the sex boat. The sex boat. <laughs> um, yeah. Kess specifically, I mean, Brooks has been privy to a lot more shit on the boat with Kess than, than anyone else. Like... Mm -hmm. Kess is doing her usual bullshit, everything's fine with everyone else and like, you know, telling wild stories about her third cousin once removed that turned their toe into a butterfly, you know. The weird shit know, that I Kess does. She, I don't know how she does it, dude. I don't know how Belle fucking Honestly, I'm convinced it. that Belle has like fever dreams on morphine, writes them down, and that's her backstory. Yeah. That's that's all. Um, <clears throat> but obviously Brooks has had those conversations, like you know, they had a private alone conversation about her childhood. And Brooks was like, yeah, that's fucked. Yeah. That's like, like, cause he had, like, as far as adventurers go, he had a fairly stable childhood experience. Yeah, dad worked a lot and I'm adopted. But like, as adventurers go, that's pretty fucking. Yeah, same for them. It's like, it's you pretty, know, pretty cookie cutter, no biggie. Um, for Davion, like, it's the opposite of cookie cutter. It's like less cookie cutter to not have like for Davion, all the yeah. stars after he left home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Like, like I mean, same for Brooks. Man. <clears throat> I just like Brooks and Kess have had these moments, and then like Kess being like, I, I believe that Kess's intention was to try and relate to Brooks after, after the conversation of his backstory. Kess was like, "Hey, I'm sorry if I." If I push that conversation too far, I'm going to tell a story from my childhood so that you know I've been in a similar experience and can relate to you. And what it came out as is, I'm sorry that we pushed you really far. By the way, I nearly killed a child. Oh my like, god, yeah. she really did say that. Yeah. Oh, like she was like, yeah. So I got angry once and nearly, and like I pushed a kid off a cliff. Yeah. And uh, you know, and like Brooks is like, what? What? <laughs> But, like, the conversation with that, huh? the conversation that her dad's not okay, the conversation... Their little private conversations have really, like, got Brooks in this moment of... She's not okay. 
And the fact that she's opening up about these things is a big hint that she's not okay. Because she's never really been like... Uh, this is well, the first... <sighs> Kess has always been very open, but like she's always been very like... The only way I could describe it is like whimsically open. She's like, I'm going to tell a story. Haha. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... It's this like... Is... Is it one of those things that's like, okay, she's opening up about it so she's not okay? Or is it we've now been traveling together for like a month and a half, two months, and she feels like she's in a place that she can talk about this to someone? Maybe. Know? But to Brooks, he's like... I guess his thing is... He feels like Kess has always been weird emotionally, but always very level. And this is the first time that like... This is the first time that she's actually been super open about her emotions, which is, you know, then the next question is, so what isn't she saying? <laughs> like, if this is what she's telling me, what isn't she? <laughs> so he's really worried about Kess. He's worried about Elazarin. Davian... Man, he shared that vision with Davian. He knows that there's shit going on there. Like, <sighs> there just hasn't been the chance like he has plans brooks has plans specifically to spend time with davian i have bought things in character that are to facilitate that but just haven't had the chance yet i mean it's all right i mean he's all right i i don't know it's funny you like that vision i feel like traumatized brooks more than oh, yeah. it had any effect on brooks davian was like, at the time brooks davian was, was like, like i time to this? fucking commune with my Otherworldly yeah, patron, the thing is, like, real Davian quick. has seen way worse because the more Davian proved himself, the the more like human void. Yeah, uh, Kusuf yeah. Wait, it started off. Him. I mean, started off pretty radical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but so like, this, like that that vision that he shared with Brooks was like that was mild compared to how Kasuf initially like presented himself and but, his attitude and things. Brooks isn't a religious individual. Like Brooks has no. Brooks has never, before this group, Brooks has never had a fucking vision, he's never met a god, he's never seen, like, you know, he's seen, he might have seen the odd bit of, of magic here and there. Never had a vision yet. Sure. Now, don't tell Kasuth this, but, like, Davian doesn't see him as a god, you know, like, he's not really Oh, no, but, like, Brooks is like, what the fuck is this? And yeah. then I mean, on top like, of that, he's technically not a god, right? He's a, no. he's an elemental lord. No. he's, like, he's he a just, powerful elemental, elemental being, which, ele which... You know, after a few runs the fire communions, plane. like it, Davian, he's he's well. One, obviously, it's a lot more normal for him to interact with Kosuth, but like we've now we've seen Kess's dad and like fucking yeah, that does, when that when make if, it when better. power level they're like equal. It's like oh yeah, Kosuth, Kess's dad, like whatever. Like it's just yeah. no biggie. <clears throat> I guess Brooks hasn't equated like Kess's dad and Kosuth. Because yeah, the yeah, only the yeah. only interaction he's seen with that vision was and yeah, he's like, okay, Davian's in like theatrical. Davian's in with some shit, yeah, and that like, Brooks has gone from for like fucking. It's, pub well, side. No, it's also that stereotypical think, like fire bad, like yeah, yeah. like there I is was gonna say, I, I think I think it's more it's not so much the misconception that Davian's in with some big shit, but that you underestimate Kess's dad. Like, and granddad. yeah, because oh, absolutely. he appears a lot tamer than the fucking elemental lord of yeah, air. Yeah, that's also could... that's also like, uh, well, Kess's dad isn't the like elemental lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, grandfather, or whatever. Like, but like, it's all the, the reason. The reason being is that like, like their element, like fire, in intense, hot, yeah, 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 you know, passionate. Whereas air is very much like you know. Go with the flow, with the flow. You know, it'll, it'll, you know, things will be all right, that kind of thing. And the, the, the patrons of those planes, they, they embody that. So naturally, Kosuth, on the surface level, looks way more intense and way more dangerous. Oh yeah, than, Brooks would not than chat. fucking uh, the any of the other elemental lords will be. But in power level, all four elemental lords are pretty fucking equal. Yeah, Brooks would not chat the shit to Kosuth the way he, the way he like talks about like. Kess's dad. He hasn't really spoken about a granddad, but like Kess's dad, Brooks is like, this guy's a scumbag. I think that's that's a point where like it, I think Dutch mentioned earlier if Davian gets too big for his boots or whatever. I think that might be the only context that Davian ends up getting like smack is being way too comfortable just chatting with Kosuth rather than like yeah, you're a really powerful lord that gives me all these magical powers, and I should probably like be in reverence somehow. He's just like, yo, what's going on, big man? <laughs> like, yeah, you're right, yeah. fella. 
Yeah, boss I was wondering man. if you could do me a favor. It's a bit cold in here. Thought I'd commune with you just to get you to want. Fuck off. I think actually it's in, I think it's in the class, the subclass description that I can just emit warmth. At yes, will. no, because when you first got all three things and started doing shit, you were really warm and yeah. Yeah. So we're um, all going to be huddled around Davian for war. Now that we're on the yeah. topic a little bit, right? Because uh, we, we answered the question, I feel like. Um, unless there's anything else. Ooh, the, men the mental health question, yeah. Every everyone's fucked. Yeah, pretty and much. And we're dealing with it as we go. Uh, no one's worried about Jax, and he's got 300 years of God knows what under his for, belt. for so. Davian's Warlock, uh, we made a custom subclass. Uh, I think it's yep. Pact of the Flame Soul, we called it. Uh, right? Yes. So yeah, we, sure. uh, you know, for we b b the way we did it was just, we just looked at how a typical warlock subclass looked like. What levels do they get? Shit. What is it? What are the things they get? And we just made like fiery, a fiery themed thing. So one of the things yeah. that we added at level one is the uh, um, imbue elemental, imbue elemental power. power, and he also gets boon of the smoldering soul, which just gives him control, the control flames cantrip, and yeah. uh, you're comfortable in both hotter and colder climates, growing accustomed to the heat easily, while able to warm yourself in the cold, and you radiate five feet of warmth around you at will, so you can. Isn't that cute? Well, that's that's just like a little little tidbit. Yeah. Imbue elemental power. We looked at and we kind of looked at other things that that warlocks get at level one for for just being a part of a certain uh, pact, and it's just. It's it's one of those like unsuccessful attack it doesn't cast it, it's a free action but if you hit something you can just do an additional one d eight fire damage if you want to yeah uh, and you can do this um, it, they need to and then hostile within ten feet of the creature make a dexterity save uh, or also take fire damage or have yeah I I'll probably uh, change the can, wording to like creatures of your choice and well, probably put a it limit says, on it it says hostiles within yeah but if I wanted to hit yeah I guess Brooks. so and then. Uh, you can use his power a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. That is basically the way a lot of the level one packed stuff for warlocks kind yeah. of go. W deal well, some deal some damage. The only thing that we added, I feel like, is like the area of effect after the fact. In terms of in terms of off like offensive or like, like damaging spells, I think uh, as as an innate ability, the only other one might be fathomless. I think. Yeah. Um. Which is the tentacle, which. Yeah, I I want to believe that the the element in elemental power is like equal to the tentacle um, for a couple reasons. In elemental power is essentially green flame blade on crack. Yeah, um, so uh, tentacle of the deep. Uh, the only thing about the tentacle compared to does cold damage. But the only thing compared, the only thing that makes it tentacle maybe a bit more okay i guess is the fact that it's a bonus a action whereas okay. yours is a free action right um yeah but, but it's it's like it's like again, a fucking it's like a fucking spiritual weapon yeah but then again the that tentacle has lasts some minutes. versatility yeah yeah it's kind of like a it's like a big b's hand kind of i think like there's a few different things you can do but i might be wrong uh i know it does cold range, damage does so it slows damage, people which is pretty cool people. Uh, and you can, as a bonus action, you can also choose to move the tentacle. But yeah, so like power level wise, I feel like it's pretty equal to to what you have. I um, I'm borderline like. I think I think tentacle might regenerate charges on short rest. Maybe yeah. Which in elemental power does not. No, you have you can use them, however whatever your proficiency bonus is a day, and then you have to long rest a for day. it to re recharge. Oh okay. Uh, yeah. it's, I I think I think. It could. It's it's like green flame blade, right? Mm -hmm. Except green flame blade is not a saving throw, I think. Where, and it's like it hits one target, one additional target, and it does damage. And I don't think it's a save, but I could be wrong. But yeah, yeah I think after after just fucking blowing up on that. But, but, from in my head, it seems more balanced, but only because my spell save is shit. Like, yeah, so plus, it seems like, to me balanced. Yeah, plus, like, you did some work with it, it against those like pirate crews, but keep in mind they had like five HP a pop, right? Like, that's also a thing. So, like, you, yeah, you killed three skeletons in one, or the sirens. Yeah, they have a lot of HP, but they were all like on death's door when Davian did it. So, like, that makes it. Yeah, like, it's just a matter of like kill or whatever makes it look very powerful. But at the end of the day, like, they were already like they fought, all failed you know? a very low save. But yeah. like, like I, that can't be part of the balancing because exactly. you know if you make 
make a warlock with 18 charisma, like, yeah, you're gonna fuck shit up. So I don't know. It, it's it's still subject to change, and I think maybe like comparing it to things like Green Flame Blade and and looking more at kind of making it equal with um with the tentacle because I, I think damage wise it kind of blows the tentacle out of the water even though i think fire damage is like a very common resistance mm -hmm. for example it is the, the most common resistance in the game yeah i believe pretty much but, anything from the hells has it and yeah so. yeah but might need to limit the number of <laughs> number of targets, or just limit it, limit it to one other person. Yeah, or we can something like that. I mean, we need to we need to like next level up. If you, next level up in warlock, you just get uh, eldritchification, so you just get like spells or whatever. So like that's not a pretty big deal. The next time you have to sit down and think of uh, you know the next step in the subclass is at third level warlock because that's where you get your pack boon and that's where yeah, that's where and, um, and that think, think. like. And I don't even know. I don't even know what my leveling up is going to look like. Yeah, in terms right. Because you can you could very easily also just level up yeah. in Ranger, right? So with with where where we where we've been so far and like how much how much warlocking I've been doing, mm -hmm. it it makes sense to get that second level. And obviously, you know, Eldritch Invocation is kind of lit, so I kind of would probably want that. But the next leg of this journey, like for example, if we go after the Druids and stuff, like if there's going to be a lot of um ranger. ranger shit to do a lot of ranging <laughs> who knows i might i might go for some levels in ranger yeah maybe uh, cuz that is my main class i think i always want it to be my main class yeah you just you just a ranger i, I do the, really the ranger like with some extra sauce is what is what that yeah, means, right? I, yeah i do really like the uh op optional class features from tasha's cauldron the mm -hmm. uh it's like something explorer but, you know, at some point I get, like, climb speed and I, like, don't need as much rest and shit like that. And, like, that's super cool. Like, I want to be able to get, Deft Explorer? get to that, is that point as a ranger as well. The Deft Explorer? Is that what it is? Yeah. I think I think that has a bunch of different things as the levels go up. I mean, uh, from, da -da 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 -da. from an outside perspective, nothing Davian's done has seemed particularly like overpowered at any point. No, it's been well timed to be like, yeah, like yeah, definitely. Like, in, ca awesome. in character, we've been like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, but out, like mechanically, everything seems like yeah, it's so it's far pretty good. Like not like Bran, like Bran, and like but then we have Koiba. Who yeah, gets... I mean, we have we have a Twilight Cleric, oh, which is a Twilight cler Cleric who is blatantly OP, but that's which like is the second that's okay most broken subclass in the game. You know what I mean? Like it's fucking mad. The last campaign we had a Moon Druid, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, at the Death Explorer, you get you know first off you get Canny, so his proficiencies and additional languages and yada yada. Roving, yada. Roving, Roving is a cool ability. At six level, so your walking speed increases by five, and you gain a climbing speed and swimming speed up to equal your walking speed. That's sick, by the way. That's dope. Yeah. And then at 10th level, then you get 35 tireless. Foot climbing, swimming. Uh, tireless is sick as well, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, as an action, you give yourself some extra temp HP equal to a D8 plus your wisdom modifier. Um, you can use this action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. And they refresh after a long rest. And also, your exhaustion decreases by one. If you have ex exhaustion points, after it only a takes, short a, rest. It takes a short rest for those. Yeah, which is. That's mad. That's which is sick insane but yeah like i feel the pack boon because like there are some you know uh, the pack boon is not necessarily happy it's you know packed to the chain packed to the blades but then again yeah with us doing like this whole new patron and a new subclass i think it would be cool definitely would be cool to flavor the packed boon yes uh, you know in that same vein accordingly as well. accordingly so but that's that's not until you get level level three warlock so you know, i, I do like I do like the spell list. Obviously, every Warlock subclass has an expanded spell list. So, yeah. yeah, the expanded spell list is pretty cool. It's all obviously fire focus. I think if I was ever to actually make this subclass a subclass to whatever degree, like, it, you know, I would want it to be something that was diverse across elements. But then you're essentially making a Warlock, a Genie Warlock anyway, because you've got yeah. Yeah. the four elements covered in the in the Genie Warlock. Yeah, pretty much. Just you have a vessel. So it's. Huh. Which, by the way, why do why do we have to wait so long before we can all just hop in Kess's vessel and sleep for fifteen minutes? I don't know, man. Unbelievable. 
Well, Wait, yeah, Cassie's gonna that? let us in her vessel? Yeah, that's her. That's her fucking. That's her. Her. her that's her. Trip, a, dude. It's her mind palace. It's her safe space. No, so she has two vessels, palace. right? She has one for herself, and then she has one that just takes her to her dad. So, but yeah, well, you know, we'll sleep on the beach, and my dad's. Yeah, you guys can sleep tomorrow. on my dad's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. And then her and Daigon can... will have like a sleepover in her. Personal what happens? Or she goes in the vessel with one vessel. What happens to it? Like, because all her co- belongings go with her, right? Yeah. So can she take a vessel in the vessel? And then go inside that and vessel. And then go in that, that vessel. vessel? Yeah. She could. That's so weird. Pocket dimension within a pocket dimension. Well, it's not necessarily a pocket dimension. Like, it's it's all but... it's it's it, it is and it isn't. Her personal vessel, that's a pocket dimension. The one that her dad gave her is just like a vessel. Like it's like a, it's not necessarily a vessel, it's more of it's like a beach a, from uh, Death Stranding. You no, you literally you she is at on the elemental plane of air when she's in uh uh dad's vessel. Whereas in her own so vessel like a gateway. Yeah, kind of, but but her own vessel is like a, a, to be a, like a, a demi plane, like a a tiny yeah, like the, middle the, of nowhere in the astral Dad's sea. Dad's vessel is like magic to look and function as if a normal like genie vessel would, but it, it's in in reality just a, a transportation to the immense plane of air where her. It's dad just is. a solo teleport. Yeah, whereas her own personal. Can vessel, she even take us in her dad's vessel? No. Could she when she has the ability to take us into a normal no. vessel? No, because it's not her vessel. It's not her vessel. Interesting. It's not so a vessel. We can it never looks, go see it her looks like a beach. vessel, but it's not a vessel. It's actually just a, it's, it's a teleport. But it's a breakfast cereal. <laughs> like, it, she teleports herself using Dashu's vessel. She doesn't actually, like, hop into the vessel, if that makes sense. It, it's a pocket portal repeated use. Yeah. With the same vessel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rather than a, a, an actual vessel. But, like, but because... Kess and Genies in, in particular are very familiar with how vessels work. It's just made to look like it and function as if it were a vessel, but it's actually not. We're fifth level, right? Yeah. So I'm four and one? Yeah. That means next range level, I get beast sense. Ooh. Ooh. You, got a, you got a few sessions to think about that. Don't think about what you want to do. Oh, well, we'll see. Oh, um, no, it'll be another warlock level. All right. Next level up, just thinking ahead. Before we uh, get towards the end of today's episode, because we've been, we've, we've been waffling... Do you guys have any questions that we like to that you would like to ask me before we uh, wrap it up? Oh, when's man. the next level up? Uh, when, <laughs> in in when, my when, in my when absence, you retrieve the fucking uh, trident is when you level up. Please, Confirmed? please yeah. do not let this fucking storyline with Celeste progress in my absence. Because if I'm not oh, here, oh, to... I DM'd Dutch the fucking yeah, note that I'll, I'll wrote. like I, I won't. <laughs> I won't, I, you know, the the role play, like, well, I'll just act as if it takes her a couple days to find the notes or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that you'll be there yeah. when she does. Yeah, that's right. I need to be present when I'm pulling Brooks's teeth out with pliers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. no, I wasn't, I wasn't canonically, Kess wrote anyway. in the note, Brooks just slipped it in. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to anyway, like, obviously. It'll be a lot easier to pull Kess's teeth out. Would it? I, I mean, like... give it a couple of years, they might fall out if she has a degenerative deal illness. That's a big dad. word. You want to try that again? Degenerative illness. Oh, you fucked it up again. <laughs> you really fucked it up again. The fact that you managed to like I fucked it up on the purpose. Yeah, no, it was on purpose. Time. It was like so perfectly like recreated. <laughs> like, like your tongue is too big for your mouth. Degenerative. It is. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, as we always do, I'll I'll leave you with a little teaser for what's to come. I think um, I need a teaser. The th- you're going to experience the third omen right as expected and you're going to you're going to find out what happens after whether you succeed or fail i guess uh and the answer to the question what the hell happens after you see or survive seeing the three omens comes from an unexpected corner Like the 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 reasoning of the three omens existing is something that none of you will really see coming, I guess. See coming. X D. S E A. Stop. <laughs> thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, thanks uh, you two for being here. Uh, appreciate you. We'll catch you all on Sunday for uh, Dungeon Select Campaign Two: Elements of Keldar. And uh, Dude. do our best not to get Davian killed. If it's something to do with the fucking 
elemental lord of the sea. Oops. That'd be surprising. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll we see. get to kiss Amber Lee on the mouth. Maybe. Stop. <laughs> Peace oh, out, please. everybody. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Take care. Have a have bye, a everybody. Have a great weekend, Love you, know, you and all that stuff. And uh, we'll catch you Sunday. Bye bye. See you Sunday. Du -du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. I'm gone. Bom, 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 bom. Du -du 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 -dum. And now slowly like fade out, just like. <laughs>